In a universe of lightsabers and blasters, X-Wings and TIE Fighters, not every piece of tech gets a leading role in the Star Wars universe. Ever since Boba Fett first appeared in 1978, fans of the franchise have been very curious to know more about this mysterious figure and especially about the unique armor that he wears. Thanks to the new show, The Mandalorian, fans have gotten to learn a little bit more about this renowned clan of bounty hunters and their iconic armor. Mandalorian armor is known throughout the Star Wars galaxy as some of the best that you can get. That's because the finest Mandalorian armor is made of the fictional metal Beskar, one of the toughest and most legendary metals in the galaxy. It's only found on the planet Mandalore and its moon Concordia, and only the Mandalorians know how to properly work it to get the most out of its properties. The Beskar used in their armor is described as an alloy and not a pure metal. And the process of alloying metals isn't science fiction, it's very real. An alloy is just a combination of two or more metals or other elements in varying ratios. Some examples you probably already know are sterling silver, which is silver and copper, brass, which is copper and zinc, and of course, 10, 14, or 18 karat gold, which is gold alloyed with varying amounts of silver, copper, and sometimes other metals. And of course, steel. Adding carbon to iron improves its strength and durability compared to pure iron, and techniques such as folding can increase the toughness significantly. Different additives are combined to make a Beskar alloy that's even better than pure Beskar. Alloys are created to bring out the best in the respective metals and to reduce or eliminate adverse properties in the pure metals. So what kind of alloy could we come up with to create something like Mandalorian armor? Let's use the alloy commonly used for armor and used for centuries, steel. Steel is pretty strong and is used all over the place in construction, weapons, tools, ships, trains, cars, everything's got steel in it. But I think we can do better. Chromium is added to steel to make it corrosion resistant, stainless steel, but we're looking for something stronger. Adding manganese to steel gives you an alloy commonly known as mangalloy. No, not mandalloy, come on. It's very impact and abrasion resistant, and the coolest thing is that its surface hardness increases up to three times under impact. How cool is that? Despite that, it doesn't get more brittle, meaning its toughness is retained. On top of all of that, its tensile strength, that is its resistance to stretching and pulling, actually increases as its work hardened. Basically, the more abuse it takes, the more resilient it gets. It was created in 1882 by Robert Hadfield in a search for a hard and tough alloy of steel to use for making trolley wheels. At the time, steel manufacture was a bit more of an art than an exact science, and really skilled metallurgists were very secretive. Kind of sounds like the Mandalorians. Anyways, after adding manganese to steel and testing the properties of this new alloy, he was pretty blown away. Actually, it was, he was more like confused. It looked soft and dull, like lead, but was grinding away at the teeth on his files. It couldn't hold an edge and cut things very well, but it also couldn't be cut with saws or machined on a lathe. It wasn't even magnetic, despite being 80% iron, and trying to grind away at it just polished it a little bit. After a few hundred more experiments, Hadfield decided that he had not made a mistake after all. In fact, he had found what he was looking for. Mang alloy is used today in rock crushers, cement mixers, and oh yeah, armor plate and soldier's helmets. That's just what we were looking for. It's also used in safes because of its resistance to drilling. So bonus, we can use it to protect all that bounty we're gonna earn. Okay, so now we've got an alloy that could survive being flown into the mouth of a crate dragon probably several crate dragons actually, and we could even use it to store that giant pearl afterwards. But what about shrugging off blaster fire or parrying lightsabers? For that, we're gonna need some serious heat resistance. Let's assume, like many other Star Wars fans, that lightsaber blades are some sort of super hot plasma. And if that plasma is comparable to modern day plasma cutters, then we're looking at temperatures up to 22,000 degrees Celsius, almost 40,000 Fahrenheit. It's a tall order, but I've got an idea. Let's talk tungsten. Tungsten is a rare natural metal with some pretty spectacular accolades. Of all the pure metals, it has the highest tensile strength, the lowest coefficient of thermal expansion, meaning it is least likely to deform under heat. It also has the highest melting point and boiling point of any discovered element, period. It's about as dense as gold and it's very hard. It's even non-reactive to water and can resist attack from many different acids and bases. All of these properties means that tungsten is used in alloys for building things like rocket nozzles, light bulb filaments, scratch resistant wedding rings, and for making high speed steel, a material used in drill bits and saw blades so that they can spin faster and cut faster without getting too hot. Rocket nozzles, hey, wait a minute, maybe we can get that jetpack we've always wanted. Let's recap. So our Mandalorian armor recipe is to take iron, 
add a little carbon to make steel, throw in some manganese for durability, fold in a little bit of tungsten for some heat resistance, and oh, why not throw in some chromium and make it easier to clean? Does it survive a lightsaber? I'm afraid not. The melting point of tungsten is just over 3,400 degrees Celsius, which is well shy of our 20,000 degree benchmark. Adding tantalum carbide, the most heat resistant alloy with a melting point of 3,800 degrees Celsius might let us shrug off a blaster shot, but unless you want your bootlegged Mandalorian armor to melt with you inside it, I would avoid crossing a Jedi. That's all for today, guys. Tell me, would you join an elite clan of bounty hunters becoming both predator and prey? Would you risk it all for Grogu? Let me know down in the comments, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching, and may the force be with you.